before we start this video, I would like to give a big thank you to Team 9496 Link for providing all the footage that I'm using throughout this entire video. They had the week's series streams up early and allowed me to use this video footage so that I could share this all this information on the internet. So a big thank you to them. We have covered them on the channel previously before. If you'd like to check them out, uh, I will be posting the link to that video as well in the comments. They're a great team. Uh, please support them and check them out if you got the time. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome back to Robo Replay for the first event we've had in 2025 that uses legitimate field elements from first. Competition season is just around the corner and based on what transpired this past week in Luke Week Zero in New England, I can already tell that Rescape is going to be one of the more strategically heavy games we've seen in a while, which is great. I know that that might be saying a lot considering the game we just had this past year. But I think that the nuance in strategy in this game, and defense in particular, will make or break teams and alliances this year at the top level. Now, let's get into the match that I thought had the best display of strategy from both alliances, with Finals Match 2 being the one that we're going to look at today. For some context before we jump into this match, Alliance 1 consists of Team 190, 2877, and 5422, all of whom have been cruising their way through the playoff bracket, with 190's robot being the best I saw through all this competition. They looked extremely polished and were destroying everybody in the qualification matches and that continued in the finals as well and in their entire alliance throughout the entire bracket that they played they had been putting up scores in the 110s and did not have a single match up until this one where they did not score at least 113 points the highest any other alliance got for the entire event including qual matches where three of the best robots could be paired together was 93. This team's worst performance was 20 higher than the peak that any other alliance was able to put up before this match. So this alliance also had only two offensive scoring robots and sent 54-22 to the other side of the field for defense in most matches, showing you how dominant the 190 and 20 and 77 combo was. And Alliance 2 we had on the other side, consisting of 166, 4909, and 1073, we're going to attempt to lower that score as much as possible and try to sneak out with a win. The second alliance for most of the day had been trying to run triple offense, but coming to this matchup, as well as in the upper finals where these two had met previously, had tried running defense to try to limit the Alliance 1 powerhouse. But since it seemed like the defense robot really didn't have full control over themselves in previous matches... This matchup, we were hopefully going to see a robot that had control and were able to play correctly, and we are going to see a two offense, one defense matchup on both alliances. In Autonomous, we are going to see 190 not able to run their multi-piece L4 auto due to a mishap with the bump on the field, but 2877 made it up with their L4 and L1 score in auto, giving us a 10-12 auto difference, as 4909 ended up making their auto score in L1 on the other side in the trough. And normally, at the the Red Alliance would end up at the end of auto with around 30 points. So if Alliance 2 was going to be able to win any match, it would have to be this one. At the start of Teleop, we're going to see 54-22 not being able to move. So Alliance 2's offensive duo of 166 and 49-09 will have a small window of opportunity to be able to score before 54-22 should come in to shut them down. And we can see 1073 go immediately over to the Red Alliance side to play some defense. 190 and 2877 are going to be stalled there due to their autos not dropping for coral, so they're going to be at the reef scoring some coral before they go to collect some coral. Once both of these teams end up dropping their coral off in L4, we're going to see something that 2877 did a decent amount, is pick up an algae off the reef close to them and throw it in the barge just once, so that 190 would have space for L3s after they're done with all of their L4s, which is something that they were constantly doing throughout quals and elims. So, as I just watched Week 0 in person, specifically in the playoffs, I feel like algae might become one of the key ways people are able to maximize the amount of points that they can earn in this match. Now, let's get back into the match at hand. With the Reef having 36 and any trough space for Coral, the maximum amount of points that you can score on the Reef will be a pretty small amount considering... 190 showing us that already there are teams that can fill up all of L4 and more in just week 0 and that's just being one robot. So I have a feeling that once we start coming up on week 5s and DCMP events, we're going to see more and more reefs getting fully filled with Coral in qual matches. And with both alliances having the same amount of max points with Coral, 
the two factors that I see determining who will win and lose matches at the highest level of play are, one, how good is your defense bot? Very similarly to how 2019 was played, you can score in a pick-and-place game in every single location, but if there's a defense bot, are you still able to max out that score? Or how well can you score with the defense bot on your alliance? And the second factor I see being extremely important is this algae game piece. We saw a ton of algae bouncing around at week zero on the ground as people would often throw them to the side or just hit them away with their bumpers and not really pay attention to them scoring wise. But I feel like in a game where there is a max score, having a game piece that can be stolen and scored by defense bots might be what decides top level matches. We've never really had a chance in a game before that you can score a game piece while also playing defense. So if, for example, a team was to create a flywheel algae robot, they could snag those algae off the ground while also locking down opposing alliances and then fire their algae hoping to hit the barge and score while playing defense and effectively playing as a defense bot that's also getting you some points through algae and denying points, which is the most important part in a game where you can max score, is denying those points away from the alliance that they're defending. So they're, therefore their max score goes down and they're able to just win the game if both alliances max out their scores. So this obviously re requires an extremely specific type of robot, and so I assume that this is going to be a really uncommon way to play the game, but if there are some teams who do opt into the strategy and they end up making it pretty far in events and make it to the world championships or their district championships, I have a feeling that they're going to be extremely valuable to top alliances later on in the season. Now, let's get back into the match at hand. We are going to see 1073 play some pretty def decent defense in this match, but I do think that there are definitely areas that can be improved upon, which will likely happen over the course of the season for all defense that gets played. First off, we're going to see 1073 positioned very far to deny one Coral Station completely, but what ends up happening is that only red, one Red Alliance robot will end up going to collect Coral for now, so we're going to see them get no value as 190 will just go to the other Coral Station. I think that play to deny one Coral Station is mostly not that good, as if the other Alliance is coordinated enough, they can just rotate each other's collections to the Coral Station and stagger themselves, and never have downtime from scoring and just go from one station to the other. 1073 also ends up realizing this pretty quickly, and mostly won't end up just going towards one Quirrell Station for the rest of the match. Once 1073 makes their way over to 190, we're going to see them end up just bumping into 190, trying to mess their Freedom Sister up, which it does work for now, but I don't really trust it as a reliable way to play defense later on in the season once teams get more refined with their collection mechanisms. However, with them pushing on 190, they are able to get in the between themselves, and in between 190 and the Coral Station, which is, I think, the way defense is going to be able to get played the correct way this season, and that leads them to be able to shove 190 around and force them to either re-enter the Coral Station against a team that has fully blocked it off, or cut their losses and scamper over to the other Coral Station and waste time. And this ends up being extremely effective for 1033, as 190 ends up just cutting their losses, goes to the other Coral Station, and since 2877 has to collect at the same time, they end up taking a crossroads, where they can either take the long path and wait for a human player to feed a Coral, as one of them is feeding one 190 right now, or they just try to go into one 1073, who are currently sitting in front of their own Coral Station. So... This is, I think, how you're going to end up playing impactful defense escape, is by forcing the opposing alliance robots to make a decision that isn't really good for them either way. And this is how you're going to take the most amount of time away from them from scoring. And so, 20 at 77 is going to just completely bail, and 1073 ends up following them, and... I think that the correct thing to do here is to actually not try to greed and mess up 2077 after they lead, but to lie in wait or maybe sneak a little bit towards the middle here and towards this side because we can see here that 190 is about to come collect a piece after they score. So what I would do instead of gunning for the other Coral Station and try to play against a defense that's already in front of you and is going to make it to their Coral Station faster than you is to just wait for 190 to come to you or try to sneak over towards the middle and cheat towards there, so that if 190 does end up going back to the station that 2877 is at, then you can go cut them off. And it's, by that way, you end up making 190, again, making a hard decision, where either you say, wait, maybe we can sneak in front of you, if you guys aren't fast enough, 
or let's just cut our losses, let's go to 2877, and let's just wait for the human player to feed us again after they're done with 2877. And as I described at the start of the season, this year's defense does feel very ping-pongy, where you're bouncing from coral station to coral station, trying to deny both robots from picking up a coral at the same time. And we can see that 1073 ends up denying one collection from 2877 from this strategy of trying to bump their collections off. But in the meantime, the stronger score of 190 is just left to score under no stress whatsoever, which ends up racking them numerous points. At 124 here, we can actually see 1073 overplay their hand, and they get baited by 2877, who make 1073 fly forward, expecting them to go to their back half of their coral station. But 2077 makes a great maneuver and great cut at the end to get to the free coral station, and we see 1073 kind of get in the wind knocked out of them as they got baited, and they leave open a great defending option of shutting down 190's collection in favor of chasing down 2877 again, right? So I feel like if you just, as 1073, just wait, right? You got baited, you got cut open, let's just wait here, and let's see, is 190 going to come to us? If 90, 190 doesn't come to us, then we can chase them down. Let's block both of them, both 2077 and 190 off from the right coral station, and make both of them try to collect with three robots at one coral station, which is perfect for trying to knock uh, coral out of robots. And so, here, I feel like uh, this strategy of marking a man in general and trying to knock their piece out uh, isn't going to really work in the future unless there has been significant counter scouting being done before the match. And it's a strategy which you intended to run because you feel like there's a weakness in another Eliza's robot that, hey, they can't really collect well. Let's bump them a bunch. So, I do want to point out that this could be what the Blue Alliance wanted to target on their defense, and they just looked at 2077 and 190 and said, hey, we don't think they can collect as well as they could if you're just knocking on them, but I don't think this style of defense is going to be all that good during high levels of play, unless it's being done with scouting Rand beforehand, where you obviously have a read on them. At this point, 2077 tries to collect a bit more, but ends up giving up, as it seems something has gone wrong with their collection system, or they just don't feel confident in trying to collect again, and end up going to play defense. And with 5422 back online on offense, 2077 feels comfortable enough with their lead to go rip some defense on Elias 2 to confirm their win. We see 2877 do a little pin that reminds me of how 321 played defense last year, with their pins against the Alliance driver station wall, using the leverage they had from against the sidewall. So something to point out this year is that pins can only last 3 seconds, so pinning is actually not nearly as good as just denying entry, as if you have to back out of the pin, then you end up giving the opposing alliance robot a free lane to go score coral. So 2077 pulls out of their pin, and 4909 is going to end up collecting a coral and score it. So after this, I think 4909 does mess up here a bit by just going into 2077 that was waiting for them, as... If they just did as 2877 and 190 did on the other side and cut their losses, ran over to the other Coral Station, they would be able to continue scoring constantly, but I assume there has to be something related to maybe a human player and the or the way they collect the Coral on the robot that's different that made them think that they had to go to their own, own Coral Station with their own human player, but it does end up costing them the last chance to bring this match into will, will range with climbs as they get flipped up by 2077 because 2077 just has full control of the Coral Station and they lose too much time to bring this match into winnable territory. Considering the climbs that happen at the end of the game, I would like to point out that if the Blue Lights got both their climbs off correctly at the end there, this match would only be a 9-point swing. So while it's obviously Alliance 1 was a better scoring alliance and 100% did deserve to be the first FRC Reef Skate event winners, defense can, and I think in the future should, be winning many more matches for alliances based on how much they were shut down points-wise. At this point, 27. Now, after all that yapping, let's recap how these two alliances play defense, what we learned about it, and also what we can take away from this event and learn about events of the future. First off, let's take what I thought were some of the best strategies 2077 pulled, and what some of the better ideas 1073 pulled, and combine them to make a plan that I think can and should work on most teams, no matter how good their collection system may be. I believe that if you position yourself in between these two locations over here, while waiting for robots to come back from the reef, that you should be able to react fast enough to either catch a robot coming to 
their close coral station and just slide in front of them through this path thing, or be able to chase them down if you react quickly enough to the other coral station and push them out of their own station, forcing them to just run around aimlessly and go back to the coral station where their partner's probably also collecting coral and they'll have to wait. As 2877 did in their mini pin, if you are able to find a robot coming to Coral Station with their bumpers not lined up, you might be able to do a mini pin on them and stall more time before pushing your advantage and forcing them out of their own Coral Station. But if the other robot ends up getting in the Coral Station, something I didn't see either of these teams doing is just sitting in the reef zone and pushing back teams. So while it's extremely risky, as if the opposing alliance's bumpers come to the reef zone in such a way like this, it is a foul, uh, but it is the only way to play defense once Coral is collected. And alternatively, you could just go to the other robot and sit and wait for them in your position that you've we've set up before, try to catch them off guard, and try to bounce off the robots on their alliance. So something I think defense is great against is the triple offense strategy in this game, where the space in the Coral Station zones and the alliance wall and just the reef in general isn't really big enough to accommodate for four robots on one side of the field, which might end up killing the three offensive robot strategy in Elo's matches for this year early, which didn't really happen last year as it took people some significant amount of time to figure out exactly how to play defense in 2024. Those are my thoughts on the finals of Week 0, and as always, please do remember that these are just some things that I noticed being run by these teams. There are much smarter and more sophisticated strategies on defense that people have cooked up out there, I'm sure, so if you want to continue staying in the know, keep watching. I'll try to break down at least one game for every single week of competition season. If you guys have a game that you thought looked really interesting later on the season, please leave it in the comments below, and I'll go check it out to see if there's anything I can make on it. Thank you for watching another episode of Robo Replay, and have a lovely comp season. Thank <laughs> you.